and at home a lot has been happening you know, um, on the grassroots in reality and practicality particularly in one sector which is the creative industry and uh, to have a discussion on the potential that the creative sector has for us uh, we have with us a very uh, popular and respected uh, fashion designer uh, to introduce her and to take us to the session i want to introduce the moderator professor mike novels uh, who is a professor emeritus at rishi hood university uh, he uh, worked with the southfields college london uh, and set up many uh, studios <coughs> Uh, several leading designers uh, before uh, uh, setting up his own studio uh, he was an elected fellow of the royal society of arts in london he is also responsible to establish the skills academy in delhi for the university of arts london uh, we are great uh, grateful uh, to him uh, for supporting us as a professor emeritus at the school of creativity at rishi hood uh, and uh, nuritu veri ji who is also an ad advisory uh, board member at rishi hood i request mike to introduce ritu ji and take us to the session Thank you, Sahil. Um, hi, Ritu. How are you? Hello, Mike. Very well, thank you. Absolutely lovely to see you. Likewise. Um, I've been I've been slightly backfooted because I thought somebody else was going to do all the nice nice bits about you, saying just how wonderful you are, just how, what an incredibly good uh, fashion designer that you are, how you have supported the industry tremendously, um, and that. Um, and your whole roots in making and whatever else. So um, I am sure you d actually don't need any introduction. You are extremely well known uh, by anybody who has any understanding of fashion whatsoever. So again, thank you very much for taking the time to um, to to uh, to have a chat. I haven't seen you for ages. Yeah, thank I'm in London. Thank you, Mike, for all the compliments and. We always have a mutual admiration between the two of us. So I respect you for what you've done, and thank you for having me with you. <laughs> How very gentle of you! How very kind! Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to start off today um, with a gem with with a general question before we become specifically down to you. Um, Ritu, where would you place India? on the global fashion design scene. How do you see India's place in the global market at the moment? At the moment, I really don't know where the fashion industry is anywhere in the world, really. <laughs> <laughs> I think the luxury industry is the worst hit in these times. Um, there are lots of brands that uh, have been uh, very popular, very respected. who have uh, you know had uh, had to shut down in these times but having said that um, the indian fashion industry is a very young industry you know we are about a third, uh, uh, only 30 years old so to compare it to an old uh, industry which is uh, which has been there for centuries abroad is a little unfair so i think we are young we are i mean 30 years is nothing for an industry so Uh, we are still developing we are understanding the rules but india was doing pretty well um, pre covid uh, days we were achieving a lot of uh, international recognition we were doing a lot of production work for global brands we were doing some we were adding to the indian economy so um, i think the industry has grown substantially since uh, you know we, we actually started only in 1990 when um, and before that there was no uh, real fashion industry to uh, to talk about in india we had no uh, dis no real um, stream of designers or a, or a concept of a fashion industry so i think 30 years is we've done pretty well and we positioned ourselves we've always been an inspiration to the global uh, fashion industry you know everyone's looked at india as a huge inspiration for a lot of collections for a lot of work they've done but um we've got a long way to go yeah thanks for doing thank you for being so very honest about it um because i mean it's reasonable to say i think that you are one of the absolute few indian fashion designers with an international presence there are very few of you and why do you think that is well i think um 
it's not easy to break into uh, the international uh, fashion scenario. You know, when I started, I, uh, I had launched my brand in December 1990. And uh, within um, a few years, I, my first show in Paris was in 1999. So uh, within, uh, you know, a, a decade, I decided that I had to do something and take India abroad, because I think we have, uh, as a designer, I feel very blessed to come from a country like India, where we are blessed to have inspiration. We have so many things to look, look at, to, um, to, to, to inspire us, to, to help us be more creative. And I thought it was, it was my duty as a designer to really take it abroad and to show the world the glory of India, which is what I did. But it's, it was very adventurous because back then for a, for a young designer, a young Indian girl from an army background to just get up and say, I'm going to do a show in Paris. Not just is it a huge challenge to break that market, but it's also very expensive, you know. So to, yeah. to achieve um, the confidence to, to go there, to get the right sponsors, to promote your brand and it's season after season, you know, it's not like you do one show uh, for a whim and then you, you go home and you're, you're actually, actually showing your collection or your work to a very discerning audience, an audience that is very aware of what's happening um, across the board, uh, very judgmental, very uh, demanding. So it's, it's really not easy to, to, um, to break that, uh, that mold to, to prove yourself and to try and keep doing it. So I think um, I was lucky and I was, um, I was a, a crazy creative person and I decided <laughs> that this is what I want to do. And, and I went there without thinking too much. I just decided that I'm going to show them what India is all about and that's exactly what I did. And I did it again and again and again. People liked what I did and they gave me a chance and I was getting a French brand, which was also quite a dream for any Indian to do. Um, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. So um, I think it was, and, and at that time, uh, people were not open to India like they are today. You know, they were not exposed to our industry. They were not exposed to the greatness of Indian creativity. They were not exposed to the, the greatness of the Indian mind, the genius that today we are all ready to accept because we have Indians all over the world achieving huge um, uh, hugely and, and gaining a lot of respect from, you know, world players. So uh, I think uh, 20 years ago, I was just a freak who wanted to do something that I wanted to do. And that was it without thinking too much, uh, you know, about how it's done and whether it will be successful or whether it will be accepted. I was nervous, of course, but I really wanted it so bad that I went for it. So uh, coming back to your question, which is why are there not so many people doing it is something I ask too, because we are a population of 1.3 young, dynamic, intelligent, you know, a, a, a class which is raring to go. We have youngsters who have huge aspirations. Why are we not um, doing more than our capacity? I, I wonder, and that's a question that only kids can answer, or people can answer. I did what I could do, and I wish more people would, would show their talent, would show their work, and uh, explore uh, possibilities. Oh, well, I think, I mean, you hit the nail on the head on one of the comments, which was that said that you are crazy, you're marvelously crazy, wonderfully, magically crazy. Marvelous, um, crazy for sure. <laughs> well, no, well, that's great, that's wonderful. Uh, and but but also incredibly creative, um, but that, you know we'll, we'll we'll come on to that in a little bit. Do you get when when you were saying, and I know this with lots of my friends who I've seen over the years who are fashion designers, and looking at in particular things like going to international fashion shows and just how expensive they are. Um, do you feel that you get enough that the industry gets enough support from the government? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, we are always looking at the government for support. Uh, you know, it's, it's incredible that we are expecting so much from our government. Whereas uh, all, over the, uh, all over the world, uh, brands, designers have created a niche for themselves. It's, it's always a private sector that does it. 
it's great if the government supports us and gives us you know the backing that we all would love to get i mean we are also so dependent on help it's so see and you know and we are also sadly we are always blaming others that we could have achieved a lot more if the government had done this for us we could have done but i mean i don't think anywhere in the world whether it's a it's a chanel or it's a eve celero that the government has created anything for them so i don't understand why we are we are always turning to the government for support if you're doing something for your country if you're doing something to enhance the art craft for the for the artisans and the talent of your of your country of course you should look at the government to help because that's a contribution towards the country but if you're trying to create your own brand you're trying to do business i mean why what has the government got to do with it that's a very that's a very level headed for somebody who's admitted to being crazy that was a very level headed response yeah no, that that's fair enough it's too easy to to you know to 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 part to pass the blame but i've literally just come off um, off a, 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 another discussion with the cii and i've been asked to be uh, to look at they're not luxury goods now but they're lifestyle group the promotion of lifestyle goods and the the point that i made on this um is that if we're going to do if we're going to seriously do something about this um you know get all the wonder the absolute wonder of india and out there where it needs to be and it should be there and it is happening but i went back to a quote from amitab khan about 2 years ago he said and it was i think this was at the opening of one of the you know the, the very you know dynamic fashion weeks that we have it, it, we've had in india and back there amitab said that if india wants global recognition if they want global brands we have to make major changes in design education which of course that was music to my ears what what do you think from that i mean you were at nift you started at nift yes right i was in the first batch of nift and uh, and it it was uh, it was the first year that nift it was affiliated to fit new york and it was the first time that nift opened its doors to india and they were going to have 25 students from 1.3 billion people so basically it was <laughs> pick up 25 uh, kids from the whole country which was a huge challenge and um, and it was it was uh, it was uh, different back then because nobody had any concept of of fashion so we were all part of um, a course that was very interesting because it was a first but none of us knew what we were going to do with it we 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 had no map to follow we didn't know that we were going to grow into being big designers and actually to be a designer what does it mean we had none of us had any clear idea as to what the future held for us and what the future of the industry was going to be so it was just about doing an impulsive spontaneous creative course or a, a you know a diploma where you were going to start something that hasn't been done before and then we we figured out our own path there was nothing that was and i have to say nift is a government institution so that was a huge step for the government to support the fashion um, you know the the whole fashion industry to to help us expose us to the whole concept of uh, studying fashion so i think in that respect I mean, we have to say a big thank you to the government for doing that for us is that was that was and even today nift is one of the most uh, reputed fashion institutes which is backed by the government no i i agree that but i always found it interesting that it but nift is the national institute of fashion technology now i'm going to put my head on the block by doing this or own up i mean india did in, unfortunately in the days of the raj us terrible english people because we are terrible we've got some good points but this whole thing where um in architecture was a classic that the uh, the 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 barasabs the 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 ongrais guys so we're, we're the architects and we'll use these local guys to be our technicians and that was a an, that was an awful thing to have done but it, i think in it some way it created a kind of legacy did 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 you feel did you feel that at all that that you were being you were being trained how to make things and how to do things and how to support industry 
but not necessarily, and how to come up with you know off the wall ideas or whatever. I think a, a fashion school basically gives you an, a, a base to understand the history of fashion, to understand fabrics, to understand text, textiles, to understand the technology of, of handling fabrics. And how you, you know, what kind of fabric you, is used for what, how you cut it, how you stitch it, the te technicalities of fashion. But to expect any school to teach you creativity is asking for the moon because creativity is inherent. Either you have it or you don't. You can't, you can't make someone creative. And, and I believe that most people are creative, whether it's, uh, I mean, some are inclined aesthetically towards fashion or interiors or, and some are really creative businessmen. So it's, it's really how you use your mind and try to do something different and try to do something new. Uh, I think that there's, uh, there's a lot we all have which gives us opportunities to, to do something new and different and, and to achieve uh, from that. So um, coming back to your question, I think the institution taught us the basis, basic details of fashion. Now we also learn to appreciate art and appreciate fashion. So like we have artisans and craftsmen in our country, we learn to use them and, and bring out a modern version of whatever we want to uh, show to the market or the audience. So um, I think our heritage, our art, our craft has all, you know, together created creative people, talent that we have a lot in India. And in abundance. It is genuinely in abundance. You know, I, when I'm talking to youngsters um, about, and as you know, education is my world now. Um, I say to them, one of the things that's very important, I say to them, if you can't make it, you can't design it. So there's no point having pie, pie in the sky ideas you need occasionally. Yeah. But if you, you need these things, you need the hands. And, and I'm very pleased to say that even I'm in London at the moment. And the, the attitude over here now towards makers and things like that is coming back to what it used to be, which is great. And it's lovely to see that there is a movement, very strong movement at the moment in India um, to do with uh, supporting our fantastic craft folks. We can't let them go anywhere. The other thing on students, and I always say this, and I'm not being sycophantic or whatever. You know that I'm 90% Indian anyway, married to a wonderful Indian two wonderful youngsters that grew up in, in India. But the, truthfully, I've always found Indian students the most creative I've ever worked with. But that's because, and they don't realize this sometimes, they could become, from, they come from an old civilization. Nalanda, so two and a half thousand years ago when that creativity was all there. But somehow, somehow that creativity has been sucked out. Now that, that's across the board, that's across the world. But you know, but somehow, the, the creative creativity, the education system around the world, not just India, has knocked out the um, the, the 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 creativity in kids. It's brought brought it down to to, to to very low levels. I don't know. Have you have you had much time to to look at the uh, new national education policy? Um, yes, actually, uh, I was uh, recently. There were some new um, reforms that uh, seem to be coming up. And I do believe that uh, I, I feel, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mike, I fail to differ because I believe that nothing can stop a creative mind or a talent, whether it's a school from, from blossoming and coming out there. You can't stop creativity. It has to be appreciated. It, has, it will reach somewhere. Nobody in this world, whether it's an institute or it's a teacher, and I've experienced that in, in my uh, uh, design days as, uh, as, as a student in fashion, I've experienced it myself. I was never considered a good student. I was always, um, um, I, I always found myself in the back bench and always not the favorite of the, of, the, of the teacher because I never followed rules. And I really do believe that in creativity, there's no rule, you, you're not, you can't say that red is the best color and you can't use blue. I mean, these kind of things are, are completely up to um, a, a talent, a person. You can't set the rules. So 
whether it's a reform, whether it's a, 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 you know, a teaching style or a system, a creative person has to come up with what they believe, what they are honest to, what they really have um, faith in. So um, my uh, belief is that creativity is something that will definitely flourish and will definitely find its way. No, I, I, I mean, I agree with you totally. There's, you know, I mean, we all know that that that, that sort of um, research that came from uh, NASA showing that, that kids of the age of five are 98% creative. By the time we've dragged them through the education system that came about at the time of the Industrial Revolution, so we're back to the Brits again, my fault, um, that we, we knock their creativity down to 12%. We try to knock their creativity. Some poor things get knocked and some cannot be. They are unstoppable. And those are the geniuses. Those are the ones that change the world and create that, that unique uh, new, um, new, new system. Or something. No, I, no, no, and, I, and, and I love that. Keep, you know, keep pushing me. I, I really love that. But that is exactly the point. But that's what I found so... That's what I liked about one of the things I like so much about the, 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 the national education policy, the new national education policy. There's one little piece about it that says, you know, if somebody has a, has a different talent, um, there's somebody has a different, you know, a different thing about them, let's use that, let's nurture it. It might be, it might be music, it might be dance, it might be, um, it might be all sorts of things. And, and then let's do that. And then of course the vocational ad I, I totally the, agree. I mean, I, I, I love the fact that there are schools that have piano as a, as a subject, you know. And my daughter is very talented and she, she's a natural with the piano. And if I could get her to a school where they could, you know, she could study and from her childhood have uh, this opportunity to play the piano through school and get into it in a, in a, and make that her, her life, you know, I would be thrilled. So I really do appreciate this this new concept and the new, I, I hope it happens, you know. I hope it works. It is happening, it genuinely is. I mean, that's why I was delighted when I was approached by the team from Rishi Hood um, to, uh, to be, I'm their kind of, uh, I'm their mascot, okay. the emeritus professor, which just literally means I'm old. I've been, I know a lot of people and I've become a mascot. But the fact that, that, that I'm associated with a school of creativity uh, is terrific. It's not, it is a school of design. It is a school of dance. It is a school of this and that and everything. But ultimately we come down to that thing. And I'm absolutely delighted uh, that you are part of that school. It's gonna be a joy to working with you. Um, if I may, I know I'm coming near to my, to my, my time, but the, oh, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Um, but I've noticed that we've been, we've been uh, joined by Suresh Prabhuji, who is somebody I have heard speak many times and, uh, who I, uh, who, who I respect very much indeed, and he will be joining us. And I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of Mr. Suresh Prabhu. I always have been. There are not many like him with a, with a mind like his, mm. and his uh, simplicity, it, it, the problem is he's so reclusive that one can't get to him, you know? He's, but he's, <laughs> one of the, he's one of the nicest, uh, uh, ministers or people that could have happened to India and I really do believe that I miss him greatly and I have to say that he is he's a real inspiration he's, he's I'm well, a big fan you know well Ritu we finally got to him we found him <laughs> you're like very it. lucky you're what, very lucky what do you want what do you want to ask him no I have nothing to ask him I only want to tell him that he's missed and it was so nice to have him in the ministry with us he was a great support. He gave us such a push, and and he he's he he is a man of uh, few words, but he he uh, he uh, he's somebody who sticks by his word. So I'm I'm totally a fan, and I remain that. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Ritu.